right? So uh, this is what Oluwatu, and this is what our ancestors dealt with getting on getting on the ship. So um, these, so so once we were talking about a little bit about how we were deemed as, as not being human or not being uh, of the human family, different things last week, and in reality. Um, the, the, the men and the women and the children that survived this had to have been um, tougher than you can imagine. Right? I mean, we, we complain over stuff that's not even worth mentioning, right? And we have about a two and a half, two and a half months at sea making this journey across. And, you know, I might have died that last week. Right, so the sicknesses and the diseases and the starvation and the rapes and the violence and all the different things, you know, will drive you mad. That's what the Almighty said. So, the course of this, this, of this section or of this uh, was called uh, mistaken identity, right? So we are looking that, hey, we are, we've been identified the wrong way, right? If you've ever, uh, you know, some movies or something, not for some brothers, it's really not a movie. You're walking down the street and the police pull up beside you and they say, hey, you matched the description of someone that did something. It's like, no, it wasn't me. You know, mistaken identity. So this is what we have, but it's, 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 it's Yah's hidden ones. So in Psalms 83 and 3, they have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. Okay, that's the King James Version. Now in the Hebrew English Bible Version, it says they hold crafty converse against thy people and take counsel against thy treasured ones. So this word is Zafan. It's in its uh, plural form. So it's uh, uh, Zafunecha Zafunecha because in its plural, plural form. But Zafan is hidden or treasured. So this is common sense here. If something is valuable to me if something is important to me, if I don't want you to take it, I don't want you to steal it, I don't want you to abuse it, I don't want you to do anything to it, then I'm going to do what? I'm going to hide it. So the ugly one knows that the hidden ones are out there. And the ugly one's job is to convince man or other people groups to do what? Go against the hidden ones. To eradicate them. Here's something, we haven't got here yet, but we're going to look into some point about the, the fallen and the giants and how the children of Israel, this is what makes the children of Israel such a threat, is that they were killing the giants. They're going through, they're fighting, you know, uh, uh, it was Caleb or Joshua, you know, go and take that mountain. You know, they got, they got chariots of iron, go and take the mountain. You go and you kill the giant. So for the ugly one, so for the adversary, um, his seed or his devices, giants and all this other stuff, that the children of Israel, because of who they were and whose, whose God they, they, that they served, were able to cause havoc. So if the other one is like, man, I got to get rid of the children of Israel. So if they fall into sin and the Torah becomes a hindrance, the instructions, they can't keep it. If they're constantly being provoked and, 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 and falling in sin or black, backsliding, then when Yah disperses them because he said so in his word, when he disperses them, there's got to be a crafty counsel taken against thy people. That's what David is saying. It hadn't even happened yet. It hadn't even happened yet. Right? We haven't got to Jerusalem being destroyed or or, or, or the ten tribes. I mean, that hadn't happened yet. And he already said, they've taken crafty counsel against thy people, against thy hidden ones, against the treasured ones. Deeper meaning, crafty, ahram, ahram. This is in his child root. Literally, it means to be subtle, shrewd, crafty. Have understanding. To make one bear, naked, to uncover. So to be crafty, to be to to have crafty counsel or use a craftiness against the children of Israel, that you must make them bare, make them naked, uncover them. 
That's why I had the, 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 the little picture of the little boy with Spider-Man suit on. He's about to put the mask on. Just like, man, I wonder if this is what I should do. Because the children of Israel have been undressed. And then redressed. The children of Israel have been undressed and then redressed. And this is the crafty council. Right? This is described in 1 Psalm 23 and 22 about how David was just five and six steps ahead of Saul. Just step this man, I done look. I done came, I took a part of your garment, and I'm standing across the mountain, like, hey, look, man, just let, let it be, man. I could have, but I didn't. My guys want me to take you out. So this craftiness, okay, this same uh, word for Aaron, um, Nouns and other words broken. It's only used like maybe four times. But the words that are built from this word describes the serpent. I'll say it again. How we have our child root and other words are built from this word. One of those is descriptive of the serpent in Genesis 3. How the serpent was the what? Most subtle beast in the field. So the craftiness against the children of Israel is equivalent to the way the serpent outgained Eve. That's just, that's just scripture. Okay, now the hidden Zephon is another child root, so this, this is the uh, there's words we built from this. High treasure store up. Because it's got value. It's very important to me. Okay? To hide, reserve, conceal, cover something up. Once again, I don't, I don't want you to have it. I don't, I, I don't, I don't trust you for my valuable things. So I'm going a, I'm to a cover it up. I'm going a, I'm to a hide it. Okay? I got a, a family member that got, they got sticky fingers. Five finger discount. Well, they can't, they can't help it. So I got I to gotta hide stuff. Right? So Yah hid the children of Israel. He hid them because the nations were going to take Aram. We're going to be subtle and shrewd and crafty. So when we have events like um, Tuskegee Institute, where we had the syphilis experiment for 40 years, right, 1932 to 1972. When you have things like that, it's subtle. It's sure it's crafty. And nobody went to jail. The law is protecting. Okay, so this, these are tactics. We talked about the eugenics, which is going on to direct Planned Parenthood, eugenics, birth control, things to keep Israel from producing fruit. Okay, so the adversary is using every element he can to eradicate the children of Israel. Okay, and probably the, the best ones to have the children of Israel against each other. Right, so as we get into more next week and in in the final week about how those West African tribes or Israelite tribes. I think we, we talked about it today uh, in a Torah study in Jeremiah. Uh, I thought that was interesting. I know that's part of Torah study today, but how y'all had a problem with them keeping their brethren in slavery. Mm -hmm. Well, this is a known fact. In West Africa, Africans, children of Ham, did not sell Africans, children of Ham. That is a fact. That is a fact. Hebrews sold Hebrews. You have Africans who sold Hebrews. You have Arabs who sold Hebrews. The denominator will be the Hebrews. Now, are there other people mingling in with the Hebrews? Probably. Because as, as 1700s, 1800s, it ramps up, money being made, I'm grabbing everybody. But Hebrews sold Hebrews. We're going to look at the king of Dahomey, the king of Ash these are these are these are Hebrew kings. Kings of palaces and military and might, and they're raging war on each other. Winner gets the Europeans on the coast. I get their goods that they're bringing. Remember last week, last week we talked about hey, they sold slaves for ten dollars. Then someone took it down to Cuba and flipped it for six twenty-five. <laughs> and eighteen hundred, how much money is that? So, but hey, but, but you know, bless be the Lord, because I'm rich. It's written in, written in Zechariah that they were going to say, that caused Israelites harm. Hey, bless be to God. Got a bag, got a bag in my pocket. So, 
Um, so, so this is the, the deeper meaning. So when, we, so when we look at this, they've been very subtle, shrewd counsel against the people, against thy treasured ones, the hid ones, the ones you've covered up, the ones you've put off to the side. This is in Badagri. This is in West Africa. Um, this is uh, in I think what is called Benin today was once Dahomey. Dahomey, we'll talk about this name, but Dahomey, Da, the people of Da. Well, there was a descendant, there was a son of Jacob who had a, his name was Dan. Dahomey, Dahomey, land of Dan. Land of the people of Da. But we're going to get more of that next week. So, this is the Bagri slave route. Point of no return. So, we're going to look at the door of no return today. The point of no return. The journey to unknown destination. So, we remember what Olawado in his story, right? He was like, man, I'm just on the coast, on a ship. I, in his, in his autobiography, he talks about, man, I don't, I, I've never even seen water before. Then this big thing comes up, it drops an anchor. What is, I'm, I'm, I'm in astonishment. This magic? To show the religious concepts, what people were still doing. So when we talked about in the Torah study or maybe uh, in, in Bible study, how when they were on the sea and they were being tossed, they thought it was a spirit. So when we get to look into the people of Dahomey, the people of Ashanti, the people of Ebo, that they had certain things and rituals to fight against spirits. Same people, different place. And y'all said, ain't, no, ain't nowhere you can go. Well, I don't know where you at. And I'm going to get it. I'm a, the bill is coming. The hospital bill is coming. The court, the court bill is coming. The bill is coming. Okay. Uh, Jeremiah, go in my office and there is a, a little thing looks just like this. Look in my bags, look in the office, bring a little picture frame here and we'll, I'll let everybody read it. So this is the, um, hope I said this right, the uh, tent attenuation, attenuation well. So once you were at your tribe, you were in your village, you're, you know, we got the sisters in here, y'all done went down and got the bu buckets on your head, you done went and got water, and, and the men done went out, they done worked in the field, they done went and, 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 and went out and did some hunting, and you done came back, and all of a sudden, uh, the, 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 the uh, Ife army or the Ife tribe is coming and fighting against the Oyo people. Loser. Go become the other one's prisoner of war. So once you get captured, and once you, we've made our journey through West Africa, we're getting closer to the coast. We're not there. We're getting close to the coast. You had to stop at a well, a attenuation well, and you had to drink. So they would put together a concoction of a potion, put a hex on it or a curse on it. You had to drink it. You could, I mean, you ain't got no choice because you're you're PO, you're a prisoner of war now. You got to drink it, and you had to recite something. This is what you had to recite. I am leaving this land. My spirit leave with me. I shall not come back now. My shackles do not break. It is the shackles that hold the ship down. My ancestors bear me witness. I shall not return this land shall depart. My soul do not revolt. My spirit go along with me. I depart to that land unknown. I shall not return. So a curse was put on you. So remember when Yah said that I'm going to slap you with astonishment? You're going to be stupefied? You got drunk. I'm going to say it again. You drunk this, you got drunk. So I'm experiencing high trauma. Trauma off the root. And now I'm drunk. And I just had a, a curse put on me. And I had to recite a curse out of my own mouth. So I wonder when y'all said all these things about slapping you with mad madness and making you blind and just 
shaking your world upside down. I wonder if this is what he was talking about. I wonder if that was what he was talking about. These, and these are, these are uh, historical, like how we have like black history museums. This is theirs. They kept all that stuff. You're forced to drink a potion. Curses were pronounced on you. You want to know what the curses were? Loss of memory. I'm going to say it again. That you lose your memory. Because you just said, I shall not return. Loss of memory. Immorality. Poverty. Or in other words, to be stupefied. But we know who said it first. Deuteronomy 28. And 28, y'all spoke. And he said that you would be a byword. You would be a... I'm not going to freestyle. Because there's so many, so many things he didn't say about us. And said to us. That you will become an astonishment, a proverb, a byword, in all nations, whether he shall lead thee. So this is a, a, a landmark here. This is... Original spot, slaves, spirit, attenuation well. So this is for real. Oh, you drinking this drink. You're gonna say this, and we're gonna put this curse on you, and you're gonna you're gonna repeat, you're gonna you're gonna repeat your own curse. That phrase speaking to speaking to existence. We've been on that. You've been on that. For anybody come with a long, long robe and a and a book in their hand. You already understood this. Door of no return. So once you have been captured and kidnapped and you've had your journey and so-and-so died and this happened and that happened and now I'm drunk and I've just had a curse put on me and I had to recite a curse or die, you had to be marched between these two long towers and more curses were put on you. Oh, this is for real. And then as you get ready to go to the coast, you walk through this door of no return. Because the next thing after this is that big boat that old Wallowy Kwan was talking about. You just wait. Trauma's super high now. And I'm drunk. Or as Yah said, stupefied. Astonished. He said, I told your ancestors to honor my Torah. Your ancestors said, all that Yah has said, we will do. And I gave them chance after chance after chance. I pulled them out of I pulled them out of Egypt. They conquered the king of Og and Shihon and all these kings, these giants. Established a kingdom through a, through David, though I said I'd be their king. They said, no, let us have a man like everybody else. So they picked, or I picked, we picked Shaul. Saw how that worked out. He was supposed to get rid of all the people that were casting spells. Looked like we found them if they're still doing curses. Oh, this is real because he went to her, right? And she called back Shemuel. So this is part of your culture. This is, these are things that they, when they put a curse to say, hey, to forget. But what did Yah say? That, as we said last week, everywhere that you go, that the world, the corners you go to will cease to remember you. That's what he said. He didn't say how. He didn't say how. This is what he said. Deuteronomy 30 and 1. It shall come to pass when all these things will come upon thee, the blessing and the curse which I have set before thee, and thou shalt bethink thyself among all the nations where the Lord thy God hath driven thee. So there's going to be a day where we're going to think and remember things of old and have a mind to separate the blessing and the curse wherever we are. There were more slave ships in, when it went to South America and the islands than America in the Western Hemisphere. 
the, the North America received the least. So we could be in Brazil, Peru, Chile. You could be in Cuba, uh, Puerto Rico. You could be any. You could be Central. You could be any any of those places. And way more harder living conditions, just like that. This is what he said. Who? Who is this book talking about? Do biblical prophecies, prophecies include the black, negro, slave descendant? Like who? You? Of course not. You have no power. You have no nation. You have no military. You have no economic structure. Your animals, your beast. Not you. Why is it hard for non-black and even some black teachers to include the blacks in prophecies of the Old Testament? Do we not fit in future events? Y'all just hired work and just never left. We just brought you in, you worked and fed you and took care of you and, and kept you better and, and helped you out and taught you some stuff. Do we not fit in future? Are the scholars right about nothing to point to in our past? Or has there been a crafty counsel taken against thy hidden ones? Is this right? Or has there been crafty counsel, Ahram, against Zaphon, the treasured ones, that he put aside, he hid? <laughs> he said, why you? Why not me? We crying and we shouting and want to go home. It's like, you ain't nobody. You have nothing to do with this. Why you? Why not me? We talked about this during the Hanukkah. We had the uh, Syrians and the Ptolemies fighting. But well, who was right there in the middle? The people of Judah. It wasn't about them, but it had everything to do about them. So it's not about you, but it has everything to do about you. And the more stupefied you are, the more madness you are, the more blind you are, the better it is to have you pushed to the side. You're not a threat anymore. You're not a giant killer no more. You're not, you're not looking at Goliath and saying, I'm going to serve you and your brothers. You're not like that no more because you've been stupefied. That the curses to lose your memory, to be more immoral, and to be in poverty, and poverty don't mean money, your mind a broken spirit is worse than no money in my pocket or purse. A broken spirit. Psalms 83 and 4. They have said, let's cut them off from being a nation that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. So see your adversaries because you're a people they want your name to be erased so that you're not the force in the earth you used to be. Even say that. It's hard to, to process that. That you're not the force in the earth you used to be. But because of the legacy of trauma and the things in your unconscious mind, you can't believe that that was you. You can't believe that. I am no better off than my inferior state that I'm at. And the enemy said that the name of Yisrael may be no more in remembrance. But Yah said in a time to come, the curse and the blessing is going to make you think. But it's hard to think. You know, it's a song, it's an old rap song. No, it's hard to think when your mind goes blank. People can't think. But more if you say, what if I told you I told you so? But see, it'll be too late. Because all those things we looked at with the artificial intelligence and the gay is the new, all those things, the stain of sin, the fruit of sin, you won't believe it's going to be wrapped up all up in that mess. Children of Israel. Wrapped all up in it.
Romans 15 and 4. For whatsoever they who read the four times written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. What did Yah say? Jeremiah 29, 18 and 19. And I will persecute them with the sword, with the famine, and with pestilence. Now think about the ship. Think about the ship with the pestilence. And will deliver them to be removed to all kings of the earth to be a curse, a astonishment, a hissing, and a reproach among all the nations where I have driven them. Because they have not hearkened to my word, saith the Lord, which I sent unto them by my servants, the prophets, rising up early and sending them, but he would not hear, saith the Lord. That's what he said. Very specific. Right? And what's going on in Jer what's going on in Jeremiah's time? Who's knocking at the Judeans' door? Babylon. Babylonians. And what are the elite and the nobility and the kings? What do they want to do? They want to do what? They want to go into Egypt. Babylon's going over there. And y'all said no. Said Jeremiah, you see that basket? Uh, yes, Lord. The good fruit is going to Babylon. The bad fruit is going into Egypt. So where do they go? Egypt. Egypt. Or Africa. And they ran. And they ran. And they ran. Up and down the Nile. On across the Sahel region. Across the Lake Chad and the different areas. And over time, they settled. And you know what y'all said though? I will persecute them. I'm going to come get you. I'm not stuck to time like y'all. I ain't worried about you. I ain't worried about your next line. I ain't worried about your next line. I ain't worried about your next line. I ain't worried about you. That line over there, I'm going to get them. Time to pay up. Because what did he say? You're going to be among all nations. I'm going to drive you there. Jeremiah 42 and 18. For thus, this saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, as mine anger and mine fury has been, been full, poured forth upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem, so shall my fury be poured forth upon you when you shall enter into Egypt, and he shall be an execration and astonishment and a curse and a reproach, and you shall see this place no more. I wonder if that see this place no more is like the door of no return. what he said. Because when they went into Egypt, they just kept running. Babylonians come and they knocking out cities up and down the Nile. Yah used them. They just keep, keep running, keep hiding because they have money. The poor can't run. The poor can't run. If I got rich, if I got money, I'm going to go. That's what Jonah did. <laughs> Shop give me a ticket. I'm going to jump on the boat. I'm out of here. <laughs> Nineveh this way. What a doc. I'm going this way. I got money. I'm on the boat. Give me, a, give me first class. Man, let me down and let me sleep. Let me get a private room on the boat. So those who got money, the nobility, they can, they moving. The poor, not, 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 as, not, not as much. Jeremiah 44 and 12. And I will take the remnant of Judah that have set their faces to go to the land of Egypt to sojourn there. So they never came out. And they shall all be consumed and fall in the land of Egypt. And they did. But their offspring kept on going. Mm -hmm. And you know what he said? They shall be consumed even by the sword and by the famine. They shall die. From the least even to the greatest by the sword, by the famine. They shall be an execration and astonishment, a curse, no reproach. That's what he said. That's what he meant too, ain't it? As we reclaim our identity, how are we seen? How do people look at us? Does the world see Yah in us as we turn back? Or has all the mental programming of someone being down here and me being up here and, you know, uh, they came from the snake on this fifth day and we were made on the... Or it, so, so see how... This work is. He gonna, he gonna pull. 
He gonna pull the righteousness out of you if you got any. On all sides. Do you see this? When you see us, right? When people are, when they see us, as we're turning back. Like, I'm going back that way. I'm going back to West Africa. And I got to see with my eyes. I got to get an understanding of Ebo and Ephed. Oyo, I got to get an understanding. And then from there, when they say, we're even from here. Where we come from? The east. So I got to go back to the east. So the people see that. Tears of joy. I just want to be complete. I just want to be more than a color. I want to be more than, a, than a, 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 some kind of, of, of derogatory term. I want to be the man that Yah made. I want to be the woman that Yah made. And so when they're looking, what do they see? Is this what they say? Well, that old black stuff. I'm looking for him. My eyes is up. I want to go back. Let me go. Why can't I go? Do they see this? A bad picture, I know. Satan's propaganda and lies have filled the atmosphere when it comes to black people. Satan has planted his seeds in the minds of the nations to disregard and ignore the void in our hearts. The slave descendants, uh, since Yah spoke his judgment, there's a void, there's a legitimate void that only he can fill. Only he can fill it. Not no fake religious mess to go back where you came from. Jeremiah 6 and 16, brother, really quick. To go back where we came from. It's the only way. The void must be filled. He's going to fill it. Thus said Yah, stand in the ways and see, and ask for the old path. The old path. Where the good way is, and walk in it, and find rest for yourselves. But they said, we do not walk in it. Keep on. And I raised up watchmen over you. Come on. And said, listen to a voice of a shofar. But they said, we do not listen. So when those things are being said, the offspring of the offspring of the offspring of the offspring of the offspring, of the offspring of those that went into Egypt. He said, I'm a coming. I'm a coming holla at you. Ghana kingdom rose up. Wonderful. Mali kingdom rose up. Amazing. Song high. Amazing. But there's going to be a point where you're going to go back to Egypt. Hard labor. Hard bondage. Physically and spiritually, you're going back. And thou, sh and thou, even thyself, shall discontinue from thy heritage. And I gave thee, and I will cause thee to serve thine enemies in a land of which thou knowest not. For ye have kindled a fire in my anger, which shall burn forever. Jeremiah 17 and 4. He said, discontinue from thy heritage. He wasn't joking. He didn't say when. He didn't say specifically this point. He just said, you do this. I'm going to do this. Because Yah always does what? Gives a time for repentance. A time to turn, a time to get right, a time to turn back. So we have a picture here, it's a bad picture of the intelligence reports. Intelligence report, and we have ready for war. Militant group, Hebrew Israelites. Violent. I think it was one of the words that was used. Well, I didn't know that. But, but, Satan's propaganda. And lies. How does someone's nationality become aggression? Now I will say there are people who do act a nut and don't act righteously. And y'all will, will deal with them accordingly. There are probably spies. There are probably sellouts. There are probably pawns. 
if Malcolm X had people uh, that were inserted by the feds, I wouldn't, I wouldn't doubt this no more either. If Tuskegee Institute had feds in, 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 into the institution, think that there were revolutionaries there, which it was. Black Panthers. So this is no different. And are they going to see you this way or see you that way? <coughs> well, <laughs> history in this country says, I'll let you figure that out for yourself. So we have to be so in tune with y'all, so in tune by the Spirit, and not getting off into whatever, but being the people He wants us to be and keeping the bar set as He has it set and not lowering it down and being a humanitarian, right? Because the whole purpose of Israel was to be leaders or to be a, 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 a uh, example for other nations to follow. Okay. All right, that is uh, the end of the presentation for today. That's uh, that was just the second part of mystery of Black History, and then we will pick up in our third part um, next week. And our third part. Um, okay, it's not on that one. That took off. Um, but we will look at. Um, the past revealed. So we're going to have to get a little bit more deeper into West Africa. And we've brought up the Oyo Kingdom, uh, the, the kingdoms of the Benin, uh, kingdoms of the Ashanti and the Dahomey. Uh, and the things that they were doing lets us know who they were. And they weren't calling themselves Israelites. They weren't calling themselves Jews. Um, this is what the Europeans was calling them by what they observed. And they knew who they were. So when we look at Psalm 83, when we look at that, we can kind of narrow down the nations. Um, and it wasn't just Europe, just wasn't just European. Uh, we have adversaries. Uh, the Philistines uh, have a book called History of Africa, and it's of the Toreg people who are descendants of the Philistines in West Africa. And they were very blunt. We hate the Jews. So we know who they're talking about. Um, so, so, um, so we're going to get a little bit more deeper into it. And when we get deeper into it, 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 it shines the light of who we are, where we've been. And, and like we said about the, the example of the arrow, right? If I want to if I want that arrow to go far, I gotta pull, I gotta pull back. I can't pull back a little bit. I gotta pull as far back as I can so I can it so I can impact how far I'm going. So we gotta know who we are. And we can't take other people's perspective of us because history tells us that you'll call me anything except the Son of God. Everything but the Son of God, anything but an Israelite. But what does Yah say? And what has He said? And what is He expecting us to do in these last days? So as wickedness picks up and evil picks up and wars and rumors of wars, He's so good, He says, Yeah, it's time for y'all to wake up out your sleep. So with that being said, thank you. Uh, we will uh, see you again next week for part three of the Mystery of Black History, part three, where we'll talk about the past revealed. Uh, be blessed. Um, Yah is good. Keep the commandments. Love Yah. Move, walk by the Spirit, not by the flesh. Hallelujah. Amen.